Alright guys, welcome back to another video from Magic the Gathering. We're going to be looking at the Savage Hunger Brawl deck. Uh, I finally got my hands on all of the Brawl decks. Uh, it took me a while. They keep selling out and they keep getting harder and harder to find. Um, for me, I'm not so much into Brawl, but a lot of these cards are just pure gold in terms of like commander staples and just really, really great cards. And also, like they're like 20 bucks and you get a Shockland. So they already pay for themselves on that. So... We're going to look at the Savage Hunger deck. Uh, this is Jund, so it's black, red, green. Uh, and the leader for this Brawl deck is Corvold, Fey Cursed King. So let's pop it open see what we get. Everything else like that. Uh, if you've seen my other video opening these, you know that uh, you know, we get like the life, life counter and just some other interesting odds and ends. I don't care about the boxing, so we're just going to rip it open like a five-year-old on Christmas. Um... We get a little bit of the tips and tricks inside, and then they talk about each of the four decks as well. Nothing worth really going over. I'm more interested in the cards in here. So I didn't really look over the deck uh, on the content, so I may be as surprised as you are. But let's look at our first uh, card, our, I guess, Brawl Leader, if you want to call it. So Corvold, Fey, Cursed King, toss, cost two colors, black, red, and green, for 4-4 four, four, Flying Dragon Noble. Uh, when it enters the battlefield or attacks, you have to sacrifice another permanent. And whenever you sacrifice a permanent, put a plus one plus one counter on Corvold and draw a card. This deck is going to be all about gaining value from sacrifice engines, I assume. Um, what's interesting, though, is fetch lands aren't reprinted in here. And fetch lands are like a key essence of making Corvold a great and powerful card, uh, you know, to, to have or use or play with or whatever else I'm trying to get at. So... Um, definitely some improvements if you're going down the commander route with Corvold. Uh, I thought about making a deck with him, but I think I'm going to go in, uh, put this guy into my Lord Windgrace deck, and anything else in this deck that may work for it, I'm going to toss that in as well. All right, so let's see what we get. All right, get the nice box holding everything. We have these sealed cards, uh, an insert, a divider, a little card tab, and the life counter that we won over last time. Uh, this goes from 1 to 20 on one side, and then 21 to 40 on the other side. Um, they're cool and all, but this is kind of like a weird thing. I don't know. I don't love it. I might keep one on the side just to use it for whatever. Uh, but I don't really care about that stuff either. What I care about is what's inside this deck. All right. So let's just kind of go through each of the cards and see what we're working with. Uh, so first off, Chittering Witch, 3 in black for a 2-2. Two, two. Enters the battlefield, create a number 1-1 one, one black rat creature token equal to the number of opponents you have. Pretty cool for a 4-player format. And then 1 in black, sacrifice a creature to give another creature minus 2, minus 2 until end of turn. That's not bad. It's going to make a bunch of rats. Uh, you got a sacrifice engine, which is going to work good with Corvold. All right, Taste of Death. Each player sacrifices 3 creatures. And then I create 3 food token. That's pretty good. You're going to get some crazy value out of this with Corvold. And just in terms of synergy, drawing, I mean, even just gaining life is a nice thing. But again, the sacrifice mechanic is what makes it work. Uh, this is like a larger barter in blood or innocent blood where you can just nuke the entire field. So this is an, almost like a board wipe in a way if your opponent doesn't have a lot of creatures or opponents. Thorn Mammoth. Uh, Thorn Mammoth or another creature enters the battlefield under your control. Thorn Mammoth gets to fight up to... Uh, one target creature you don't control. This is kind of nice. You can uh, possibly give it indestructible or regenerate or some kind of ability that, you know, reduces damage or, I don't know, beef it up to insane amounts of power. And then every time you drop a creature onto the battlefield, you can just keep, like, picking off other opponents' creatures. I like this card a lot. All right, Gluttonous Troll enters the battlefield. Create a number of food tokens equal to the number of opponents you have. Again, food tokens let you sacrifice them. So again, Corvold's ability is just kicking off right here. Uh, and then sacrifice another non-land permanent to give it plus two, plus two until end of turn. That's not bad. That'll work out pretty well in terms of a sacrifice engine. Priest of Forgotten Gods. Uh, one in black for a one, two. Tap, sacrifice two other creatures. Any number of target players each lose two life and sacrifice a creature. You add black, black, and draw a card. That's a lot of abilities on one single activated ability. Uh, this might go into my Marin of Clan Neltoth deck just to sacrifice some creatures and kind of like fun police my opponents. Um, so yeah, this is a pretty nice card that just kind of does a lot of stuff. 
Dreadhorde Invasion, beginning your upkeep, you lose one life and you amass one. And whenever a zombie token you control with power six or greater attacks, it gains lifelink. Amass is a pretty cool uh, ability. This is giving me some reminders of like Bitter Blossom, but instead of fairies, you're getting zombie tokens and you have a lifelink mechanic, like kind of like towards the end game of it. Um, that's pretty cool. I, I do appreciate this card quite a bit. Cranko Tin Street Kingpin, two in red. Whenever it attacks, put a plus one plus one counter on it, then create a number of one one red goblin tokens equal to Cranko's power. That's pretty cool too. You start swinging, you get a bunch of little tokens. And uh, yeah, looking forward to see how we can start sacrificing them as well. Judith the Scourge Diva, uh, one black and red for a 2 2. Other creatures plus one plus zero. That's already pretty good. Whenever a non token creature you control dies, this does one damage to any target. So you kind of have some death triggers with probably gonna be some sacrifice stuff going on too. So you can throw an extra damage on top of it and just boost up your creatures with a plus one plus zero. All right, uh, find and finality. So find, return to two target creature cards from your graveyard to your hand. Not bad at all. Uh, finality, put two plus one plus one counters on a creature, then all creatures get minus four, minus four until end of turn. A decent board wipe on the lower end of power. Um, not perfect, but the flexibility with these two cards, I'll take it. We have a Temple of Malady, a Scryland. All right, Stomping Ground. This is the Shocklands I was talking about. Shocklands are what makes this product amazing. Just knowing that you actually get one. Uh, as of this point, I think Shocklands sit between like 10 and $18 each, especially with the Pioneer format out, because uh, they're like a must-have in like almost every deck. So, I mean, Shocklands in the Brawl decks, I almost kind of feel like if I go to Walmart and I see a bunch of them, I'm just going to buy them all up, disassemble them, and try to sell them and use that to buy into more cards. Uh, anyway, more stuff. Bake into a pie. Uh, some of the nice Throne of Eldraine cards. I love the, uh, the the fairy tale kind of approach to that. Destroy target creature. Create a food token. We know food tokens are nice. Sir Conrad the Grim. Uh, we've been talking about this card for a while among our, our uh, commander group, and it's a powerful commander. One of our friends runs it, and it is just mind-blowing at how quickly you can fire off into just pure insanity of, oh, everyone loses... 62 life uh nice playing with you all so yeah um uh, again sir conrad great great card a lot of uh text to interpret but basically when creatures die or hit a graveyard or leave a graveyard sir conrad can do damage uh one damage to each opponent and if you can really trigger and give uh sir conrad infect you're just gonna hit your opponents real quick and just end the game right there Keeper of Fables, uh, whenever one or more non-human creatures you control deal combat damage to a player, draw a card. That's not bad, just to get an extra draw each turn. It is a cat, so Cat Tribal keeps, you know, tending to get more and more things. I'm still waiting for some, like, massive Cat Tribal things. I have the pre-constructed deck. I kind of want to, you know, make that a viable deck archetype, but we're not quite there yet. Savvy Hunter, one black and green for a 3 3. Attacks are blocked, you make a food token. Sacrifice two foods to draw a card. Well, Corvold will also allow you to draw an additional card because of the sacrifice trigger as well. Food is playing a huge role in this deck. Speaking of food, Golden Egg. Uh, you know, you can get mana out of it, you can gain three life, uh, you draw a card when it comes into play. As you sacrifice it, Corvold can give you an extra card, so it's just nice to build a massive drawing engine. Witch's Oven. Uh, this is a card that I just think is like bonkers in like a draft um but it's one mana for an artifact sack a creature make a food token if its toughness was four or greater you get two food tokens instead again we love food tokens in this type of deck archetype the arcane signet that's another card that is definitely worth pulling out of here um this card is just a significantly better mana rock than the majority of what uh you know we're looking at in terms of other mana rocks uh, i think this beats the other types of signets the two color signets uh, it's debatable in some ways, but I think this is just a more superior card. Orzhov Enforcer, uh, one in black for a 1-2 death touch with an afterlife. Gets a 1-1 one, one white and black spirit creature token with flying. That's not bad at all. Just, uh, you know, just a death toucher to put on the field. Plague Crafter, again, another commander staple because this just really messes up the battlefield, especially early in the game. Kill a mana dork, kill a low-level planeswalker that's out, uh, or just make opponents discard cards. Plague Crafter just has enough hate on the field and the cool thing is 
you have Plague Crafter to sacrifice. So you can play this, kind of almost treating it like a sorcery. If you play it, and you can sacrifice itself if you don't have any other better options. And all your opponents get hurt pretty bad on that. Vindictive Vampire. Whenever another creature you control dies, it does one damage to each opponent and you gain a life. That's not bad at all either. Um, again, Sacrifice Engine. We're sacrificing things. And we might as well get some extra damage out of it and gain a little life here and there. Blood Soaked Altar, uh, 4 black black for an artifact. Tap, pay 2 life, discard a card, sacrifice a creature. A lot of things to do, but you make a 5-5 five, five black demon creature token with flying. Activate as a sorcery. Uh, that's not bad at all if you have junk in your hand and you just want to make a nice uh, you know, 5-5 five, five flyer with some board threats on the field. Goblin Crater Maker, 1 in red. Sacrifice Goblin Crater Maker. Love the sacrifice mechanics in here. Two damage to target creature or destroy target colorless non-land permanent. Well, Eldrazi or, you know, there may be some other uh, mana rocks or artifacts that you want to go after. Rapacious Dragon, four in red for a 3-3. Three, three. Enters the battlefield, you get two treasure tokens. Treasure tokens are amazing because, again, sacrifice mechanic, and they also give us mana for the next turn, and even color fixing if we so need it. Evolution Sage, land enters the battlefield under your control, proliferate. Uh, I love this card in terms of just what it can do. Uh, it's very broken with like Planeswalkers and plus one, plus one counters. And again, if you go the commander route, uh, fetch lands, just put this on a whole different level. Paradise Druid, hexproof as long as it's untapped. One in green for a 2-1, taps for one mana of any color. Nice little mana dork. Having hexproof while it's not being used is, it's okay. Nice for mana fixing. Uh, Pollen Bright Druid, one in green for a 1-1, one, one. enters the battlefield, choose one, put a plus one plus one counter on a creature, or proliferate. That's not bad. Um, you know, if you get some plus one plus one counter themes going on, or some, you know, extra stuff that requires counters, or even just to proliferate Planeswalkers, fun card. Golgari Find Broker, Find Broker, uh, black, black, green, green, 3-4, enters the battlefield, return a permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. Okay, not bad. Death Sprout, one black, black, green, destroy target creature. Search your library for a basic land card, put it in the battlefield tapped, and then shuffle your library. In a three color deck, this is pretty nice. Uh, unfortunately, though, having the black, black in the cost is going to be more specific on when you can cast it. But uh, being able to destroy a creature and get a land out of it, that's not bad at all. Thrashing Brontodon, uh, one green, green for a three, four. One sacrifice it, destroy an artifact or enchantment. Having answers to those things is awesome and definitely necessary in Brawl and Commander and everything else. Rhythm of the Wild, great card. Creature spells you control can't be countered. Already amazing, amazing card. Uh, Non-token creatures you control have Riot, so they enter the battlefield with either a plus one plus one counter or haste. So make them strong for the next turn or get them swinging fast and early. Leyline Prowler, one black green for a 2-3, Death Touch, and Lifelink, and add one mana of any color. That's pretty darn good. That's going to be a, quite a nice uh, piece of utility. Like mid-game, even late game, just to have a Death Toucher is pretty sweet. Mayhem Devil, one black red. Whenever a player sacrifices a permanent, you can have Mayhem Devil deal one damage to any target. It's not that you can, you must. But uh, yeah, being able to hit your opponents, your opponent's creatures... Some sacrifice mechanics, food tokens, treasure tokens, sacrifice creatures, all those different lovely things. Uh, and it's not just you, it's your opponents as well. So you can kind of do some like cool interactions, you can be like the fun police where you can go after people who have a lot of sacrifice mechanics and you can put that threat on the board to slow them down. Woodland Champion, one in green for a 2-2. Whenever one or more tokens enter the battlefield under your control, put that many plus one plus one counters on Woodland Champion. Ooh. That is some synergy right there with a lot of these tokens uh, that come into play. And any tokens, not just creature tokens. This card could get very big very fast. Moldervine Reclamation. Three black green for an enchantment. Whenever a creature you control dies, you gain a life and you draw a card. Okay, let's sacrifice some things. Draw some cards, gain some life. Uh, Corvold Trigger, draw more cards. And just keep pushing through our deck. All right, ooh, we do have a Planeswalker on here. Uh, Angrath, Captain of Chaos, two uh, black, red, black, red. Creatures you control have Menace, nice little ability to toss onto the field, and minus two to amass two. Two plus one plus one counters on an army you control. If you don't control one, make the zombie uh, army creature token first. So with some proliferate stuff and all these other things, you can keep amassing and also give your creatures uh, Menace, which is quite 
Nice. I think we're on to the basics. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six mount, uh, swamps. One, two, two mountains. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six forests. Bloodfell Caves, just a tapped and gives you one mana of any color, gains you a life. Uh, Cryptic Caves, one tap, sacrifice it, draw a card, activate only if you have five or more lands. Not bad to throw away a land to get something better, and it's a sacrifice mechanic. A Command Tower, again, another staple to put into Commander or Brawl or whatever else you want to use it for. Evolving Wilds, uh, it's a sacrifice mechanic, so Corvold likes that, So, and it's also mana fixing. All right, we got a Golgari Guildgate, a Gruul Guildgate, and a Jungle Hollow. These are all just like tapped lands that just do things, uh, gain life, and a Rakdos Guildgate. Uh, I don't know why we have the gates in them. Um, I mean, like, they're cool and all, but it would have been cool if you had some sort of mechanic where you could fetch a gate or anything like that. Uh, but yeah, anyway, that is the deck. Uh, Corvold, Fey, Cursed King. At some point, I may want to make a commander deck around this, but I think for now, this is going to find a home in my Lord Windgrace deck. And you can check my channel to see uh, where that video is. I had a lot of fun breaking it apart, uh, like breaking it down and talking about it. So anyway, I got two more Brawl decks to open up. Uh, there's the Mardu Knights, and there's also the Esper... Uh, I don't even know what to call it, just Esper shenanigans. Uh, flying Matters, uh, Artifact Enchantment, and I don't know, just a bunch of cool stuff. So, uh, yeah, we got some things to go over on those, but yeah, hopefully you enjoyed watching this, and if you have any questions or comments, please be sure to toss them in the comments section. Thanks for watching, hope you have a good day.